Hello everyone at the LNG Producer Consumer Conference. My name is Kenta Matsuzaka and I'm a Senior Managing Executive Officer at Mitsui OSK Lines. First of all, I would like to offer my congratulations on the 10-year anniversary of the LNG Producer Consumer Conference, which first began in 2012. I would also like to express my gratitude to the Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry, Asia Pacific Energy Research Center, IMPEX, Sumitomo Corporation, who are in charge of this meeting, and all those who have contributed to the conference. The environment surrounding LNG has changed significantly over the past 10 years. But the importance of LNG has not changed. Decarbonization is inevitable when considering the sustainable growth of world economies. And this recognition has become widely accepted throughout the world over the past years. In the course of decarbonization, LNG, which has a reduced environmental impact, is useful as a transitional fuel, and consequently, its role remains extremely important. In Japan, where renewable energy resources are limited, LNG is regarded as indispensable as the bridge resources as the spread of renewable energy growth. In the midst of rapid economic development, the importance of LNG as an energy resource is also increasing in countries in Asia, which suffer from power shortages. And in Africa, which suffer from weak energy access. As discussed in previous conferences, it is necessary to continue to support the introduction of LNG in these countries. One specific example of our company's contribution to the introduction of LNG is the gas to power project which integrates power generation facilities and gas-related facilities. In our LNG power ship business with the Carmel brand, the FSRU for Senegal arrived in the car and commenced operation in May this year. In this project, Gas is supplied to power generation vessels through FSRUs and the power generated on the sea is stable supplied to land facilities. It will shift the operation of power generation vessels from heavy oil burning to LNG burning and encourage the conversion to cleaner electric power. As a contribution to the further expansion of LNG use, our company will promote the use of LNG as a marine fuel in addition to the ownership and the operation of LNG bunkering vessels. This year, our company announced its environmental vision 2.1, aiming to achieve group-wide net zero emission by 2050. In the shipping industry, where zero emissions are not easy to achieve, this is a high goal that no other company has set. To achieve this goal, we announced that by 2035, we will reduce our GHG emissions intensity for transportation by approximately 45% by 2030. 
compared to 2019 levels. A more concrete GHG emissions reduction roadmap has also been developed with the goal of operating 90 LNG field vessels by 2030. Our company estimates that 700,000 tons of LNG are necessary for the operation of 90 vessels annually. In preparation for the large-scale operation of LNG field vessels, we will focus on infrastructure development to supply LNG, such as the operation of LNG bunkering vessels, and support the supply of LNG on many routes worldwide. Furthermore, two LNG field ferries. The first large LNG field domestic vessels in Japan will start their operation at the end of next year. This project is a pioneering effort to decarbonize domestic logistics and a major step toward the realization of a carbon neutral society in Japan by 2050, a goal set by the Japanese government. As a precondition for this, we must continue to invest not only in renewable energy and decarbonization, but also in LNG, which supports such supply. Financial support and preferential treatment by government are also essential to underpin infrastructure development for the spread of LNG fuels. Furthermore, in order to improve the convenience of using LNG as a fuel, it is essential to improve the flexibility of LNG fuel trade and to establish indicators and indexes for fair prices between producers and consumers. In short, our company will continue to support and contribute to the widespread use of LNG while looking ahead to decarbonization. In addition, with respect to the future of LNG utilization, we are taking other steps towards decarbonization. One of these uh, we are paying attention to is methanation. Methanation has the advantage of utilizing the existing infrastructure of LNG and is one of the solutions for decarbonization. We also believe that it may be necessary to transport CO2 from the location where it is accumulated to a location where competitive renewable power supplies are easily available for the production of synthetic metal. To cope with such cases, we expect the technology to liquefy and transport CO2 to expand and develop. This year, our company invested in a European company with the track record in liquefied CO2 transportation and participated in the marine transportation business for the liquefied CO2. We will continue to contribute towards a decarbonized society through various initiatives related to marine transportation. Last but not least, I would like to conclude my remarks by expressing my respect and thanks to the people who contributed to this conference in the midst of severe situation caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Despite the challenges thrown up, I sincerely hope we will be able to have active discussions at the conference regarding the future use of LNG. Thank you very much.